In today's video, we're going to talk about the Flash movie yet again, because even more information comes out daily at the moment. It's hard to keep up with it. So, yo, what is freaking good YouTube boys to here? If you are new around, and make sure to subscribe to never miss any of the Marvel, DC, Kaiju, Monsterverse-based content that we try to deliver on a daily basis. If you could subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, and let me know down below. Do you believe what Andy Moschetti is saying? Because personally, I don't believe him. And also, check us out on Instagram at Wushju to see the beautiful face behind the beautiful voice. Also, check us out on Twitter at Wushju G. Right, let's get into this video. So, there is a lot of sus information out there. So, Supergirl met Superman. This does not make any sense. Why? Because if you read the article, it says that Sasha K. Supergirl got advice from Melissa Benoist, who played a really good Supergirl on the Supergirl TV show in the Arrowverse. It also said she got advice from Henry Cavill Superman, which makes even less sense because principal photography for this movie ended over a year ago. So did they actually meet on set? No, I don't think they did because the scene that Henry Cavill did, sure, there were reports he was in LA, but the scene was with Ezra Miller the Flash, so Sasha Kaye Supergirl wouldn't have been there. So... I think that was made up. I mean, maybe there was a phone call or something, but why would you call up Melissa Benoist? Because that literally wouldn't make any sense because you're a movie actor. She's a TV show actor. Personally, I just think this is a build-up PR. And this is evident when you look at what else is said. So, Andy Moschetti says Ezra Miller will return if there is a sequel. Stay in your lane, son. Stay in your lane. That is not up to you. That is up to either and or the head of Warner Bros. Discovery, which still oversees DC Studios, at me down below, because I still think that's true. Or it's up to the head of DC Studios being James Gunn and Pete Saffron. You are just a director of a movie. You didn't even write the script, so stay in your lane. If the Flash movie is successful, and based on the amount of desperation that's going on with this market employee, I don't think it's going to be successful. So, the next bit is even more ridiculous. If a sequel happens, yes, the filmmaker said, Miller's returning for another film whilst talking to the Disclosure podcast. I don't think there's anyone that can play the character as well as he did. There's a lot of actors that could play the role just as good, if not better. Grant Gustin played the role perfectly for 10 years. The other depictions of the character are great. Well, there's only one other depiction, really, I guess you could say being Grant Gustin or John Wesley Shipp being another variation if you want. But this particular vision of the character, he just excelled in doing it. And as you said, the two Barrys, it feels like a character that was made for him. Well, realistically, based on talking to people and the reactions, a lot of people are saying that Ezra Miller does a very good role playing both versions of Barry. So I'm not disputing that, but to come out and say... Ezra Miller, is the, he's the greatest actor ever. There is so many better actors. Personally, I've seen a lot of stuff that Ezra Miller's been in. Fantastic Beast. The other times he's played the Flash, the Suicide Squad movie, etc. He screams more of a Wally West, Bart Allen variation for me personally. So I don't believe that's true. Barbara Machete, the other producer, chimed in. In principal photography, Ezra Miller was brilliant and the most committed the most professional. Ezra gave everything for the role, like any professional actor would do, and like any professional person in any career should do. Why are you putting Ezra Miller on a pedestal for doing his job that he's clearly going to be paid millions of dollars to do? Physically, creatively, emotionally. Yeah, because he went on rampage in Hawaii, didn't he? And caused havoc everywhere. But all of a sudden, everyone else is being fired. No Henry Cavill Superman, it appears. No Gal Gadot Wonder Woman. It appears, according to this article, if they get their own way, which they've literally got no control over who is the next Flash in the DCEU, he's getting praise for doing his job that he was paid a lot of money to do. So it carry on to says, he was absolutely supreme. So he's getting praise for literally doing his job that's interesting really interesting so 
Earlier in the week, the tracking went from $140 million down to $17 million. Now, the tracking's neither here or there, but it is interesting how there seems to be a defense league on Twitter going, no, it's going to smash $200 million opening weekend. Now, if you look at the replies on Twitter to the quote saying, I don't think there's anyone who can play the role as well as he did, Grant Gustin started trending. Literally, that is how many people want Grant Gustin to play the role. He is literally trending as the time of recording this video for me i'm a big flash fan you know he's in the intro the outro the banner the logo the flash is one of my favorite characters alongside wolverine but to say that ezra miller he is the greatest actor ever now to be fair to play devil advocate the reviews are very good and apparently he plays two different variants of the character barry allen very well whether that is actually going to be the characteristics of barry allen we don't know I mean, we know Barry Allen in the comics is super jacked, so we know that part of the role is not going to be played. Do we? But that's not... I mean, they, are they going to CGI that? We don't know. So, also in the news. During yesterday's video, factually, I was correct. There was an embargo for the Flash movie that was going to be the 13th of this month. And people are like, yeah, bro, you've been caught in a light. No, because I've got a press screener coming up and I had to agree to that embargo. But now the movie's coming out in the UK on the 14th. So the embargo is being pushed forward to the 6th of this month. And people are like, yo, what's you exposed? No. I mean, you can look through the Instagram at what's you. I've been to multiple press screeners, Ant-Man 3, Guardians of the Galaxy three the batman the suicide squad multiple other movies so you can check my credentials i do get to go to a lot of events what we've got coming up we've got transformers coming up soon we've got across the spidey verse uh coming up but for some reason in uk it's happening really close to the actual theatrical release so yeah of course the embargo wasn't public knowledge because if you don't attend press screeners you wouldn't know about the embargo would you so also in the news they've been hyping it up again they are hyping up this post credit scene and this is not the finished version. And what's actually interesting is there's been a lot of screenings in the UK recently. Now, I don't want to watch it until it's pretty much bang on the full movie. But what's interesting is it says in cinemas June the 14th because that's when it come out, comes out in the UK. This is not the final version and therefore not reviewable. Do I need to, do I need to rest my case anymore? They are saying that version is not reviewable, but then you get the machete barbara and andy morchetti coming out saying yeah there's so many the post credits are not going to disappoint anyone they won't disappoint and to be fair i really hope you're not hyping this movie because every review is like believe the hype now generally speaking doing this kind of content for the last four or five years when everyone's saying the same thing either it's right or it's a studio line that they've been told to say. So what could really blow you away in a post credit scene? Well, if you are actually a Flash fan, there's only one thing that could blow you away. They reveal Anthony Starr or Grant Gustin to be the reverse Flash in a post credit scene. Or Grant Gustin actually appears in a post credit scene. Or if they're talking from the continuity from the DC universe being created, you reveal the next Batman fully face actor or you reveal Superman legacy, who the next Superman is in the post credit scene. If it's not any of them, then they are massively over hyping it yet again. Now, realistically, it doesn't matter what Andy or Barbara says because at the end of the day, they're not head of the studio. Now, there was a sequel for the Flash movie that was written before James Gunn came in. But that will be none and void now. Why? Because James Gunn and Pete Saffron changed the ending of the Flash movie. So whatever they're setting up in Flash 2 can only happen if this movie makes so much freaking money. Because remember, this movie is essentially a Hamadaverse movie because it was made under the watchful eyes when Hamada, when Walt Hamada was in charge. And sure, there's been reshoots and retooling things here and there. And when you factor all that stuff in, it makes even less sense for someone like Henry Cavill to watch the movie. Why? Because he was so freaking busy. He's working on multiple projects. He's doing the Warhammer stuff. He's creative at Warhammer, it appears. He's working on a movie at the moment. Tom Cruise literally had a Warner Bros. rep come round to his house watch it with him i don't believe henry cavill went to one of these had a, like a private screener somewhere because there would have been a picture somewhere because studios don't do anything 
Fourth, why do you think you get the random picture of Terry Crews with his family? Because Terry Crews obviously agreed to say some little quote, get a little picture taken to be added to the long list of people that said it's great. Like we said, Carla Jenner's on the list, Kim Kardashian, Warshu, the Pope, Jesus, Batman himself said it's a very good movie, so it is interesting. Now, I know I seem I come across like I'm trolling in a little bit, but I do want this to be a good movie. But I'm just not going to be one of these YouTube channels that I see that are simping for a movie, saying it's the greatest movie ever, saying it's going to be DC's greatest movie ever, without even watching it. Because realistically, from the trailers, am I blown away? Not really, not without CGI. CGI is not very important to the overall story. Sure, just like video games don't have to have a perfect frame rate on release for it to be a good video game. All I'm saying is I'm not going to simp for the Flash movie like some other YouTubers are without watching it. If I watch it and it is the greatest thing ever, I I'm going to take the L and say it's the greatest thing ever. But we will see, won't we, when your boy Warshu you drops the review. So let me know. Is this damage control? Is this desperation? Is Grant Gustin going to be in the post credit scene? Because if he isn't, you sure as hell better have the reverse flash or the new Batman or the new Superman. For some reason, the machetes are blowing smoke into Ezra Miller. I don't know why. Saying he's the greatest actor ever when really he's a mediocre actor at best. So like always, guys, let us know down below all your comments, all your thoughts. Check us out on Twitter, Wish You G. Check us out on Instagram at Wish You, and I will catch you in another video very soon. Catch you later.